Hello folks, I hope you're having a great day today. Today we're taking a look at Margaret Cavendish's The Blazing World. This was published in 1966 for the first time. Uh, it was republished in 1668, uh, a few uh, years later as a solo project, as it was originally published as an appendix to a, to a, to a, to a dissertation uh, that she wrote. Um, it's one of the key influences in early science fiction um, and it's, uh, it's a utopian work. It's about 96 pages long. I knocked it out yesterday for the first time. I read about this actually uh, on a Wikipedia page where it lists this um, on, on as a sample of clockwork punk uh, of a list of cyberpunk j derivative genres. And this is an example of it, but I read it and I don't see any clockwork punk in it, although I have read anything clockwork punk, so that's, but that's where I heard of this. The, the author of this, Margaret Cavendish, was the Duchess of Newcastle, and this is the only uh, utopian work published uh, in the 1600s by a female author rather than the, the many different men who are writing at this time. Works like Utopia, for example, uh, and other sorts of things. Uh, so that's kind of a key thing in there. Uh, in this, uh, our key character, and then none of the characters in here have names, so you just have titles. Uh, so I think that's done in order to sort of make this sort of work for just about any different time, any different time level. Our key character is called the Lady uh, in the first 10 pages, and then after she becomes the Empress, she'll be referred to as the Empress uh, for the rest of the book. Um, the, so anyway, uh, so she uh, is is kidnapped by a merchant who has a who has a ship because he's fallen in love with her and he knows that he can't have her because she's above she he he's above she's above her his station. So then he flees to the poles. He's hit by a storm. Uh, the ship goes from one pole to another pole at the other in another world. It arrives at the other world, uh, and then only she has survived. And so she's arriving in the world. And then she'll quickly be adopted. And this world has a lot of uh, animal men. Uh, for example, there are bear men uh, at the place at the, at the North Pole where she arrives. And, the, and then there are fox men, uh, which are obviously suited for the cold. The next land down. Eventually, she'll meet all sorts of different men. She'll arrive at Paradise, which is the home of the emperor of the world. They'll, mar they'll get married. And then... Uh, she began, and then she watched, and so that's sort of the first 10 or 15 pages. And then she sets out all of her different uh, scholars uh, and experts uh, and so forth in, in, to, to study their area. So, for example, birdmen are studying the, are studying the stars and, and, and astronomy. Uh, the bearmen are the chemists that are studying chemistry. Uh, they're the, the worm men are studying the ground and earth. Uh, the fishmen are studying the seas, right, and so forth. Um, and so she has all these different people out there that are studying different things. Uh, and then what she does is she is then then for about half the page, for about half the book, she is going to be then getting back um, what they have been telling her uh, as a key uh, at, for their for their researches. Um, and then she's going to have conversations with them. And then conversations are going to be sort of the key concept of this novel. There's going to be very little description and a whole lot of conversations and then I'll have conversations and different disagreements from each of these different expert panels that she's assembled and that she has conferences with uh, and then after that uh, then then she will she will begin to create her and and then then we move into her moving more as, as an empress and then making empress decisions uh, she finds out that her home country is being attacked so she's going to go home and save it so she's going to be uh, uh, with with the resources of this world, and that's it. Uh, that's a novel. It's got three acts. Um, it's not written with chapters or broadcasts or anything like that. It's very dense. Here, here I'll show you. For example, this is page forty and page forty-one in the novel. As you can see, there are one paragraph break here and no paragraph breaks on this page, and there are no chapter breaks either. So there's not a whole lot of times for me to rest. Uh, it's, it's again, it's ninety-six pages long. It took me about four hours for me to knock it out last night. Um, I was hoping to knock it out quicker, but it was very dense. Um, it's written uh, in, in sort of the style of its day, so it takes a while to kind of slog through, if you will. It's definitely an example of reading more for, uh, uh, not for pleasure, but for education and entertainment, right, 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 right as opposed to entertainment, rather. Um, because you are doing this in order to learn more about the time and about the 
the people right and it's utopian work so so it's in the science fiction genre uh anyway just like dystopians are as well um this imagines another world it does have some of its own rules there's a, there's a lot of different things there um so it definitely feels like a science fiction if you will early an early work in that genre by Margaret Cap by the Duchess Margaret Cavendish, the Duchess of Newcastle, who also appears in this. So there has an autobiographical take to it too. Um, I did some research on it. Uh, this is a key work in feminist uh, sort of. Uh, research and uh there's a lot of feminist works out there that have read this uh and have taken it uh, and used it critically um so so in case you did that something that you're interested in you can check it out um anyway i'll link you to two things in the uh, comments below the first is this republication in case you want to read it in paper like i do um and the second i'll link to you on the uh comments below is um the free version i'm sure it's online since this was published in the 17th century and so it's going to be definitely something that's going to be on free online. It's past its sell by date. Uh, so there you are. I'll go ahead and read it. Have you read this? What did you think of it? Did you, uh, so I'm going to be giving it a, a 7 out of 10. It's a bit harder to read, but it's also, you can definitely tell how influential it definitely was for its time. Um, so there you are. I'm going to be giving it a 7 out of 10. Do you agree or disagree with that ranking? Let me know in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, hey, why not hit that subscribe button? There's going to be a lot more of these to follow. And then finally, I want to thank you so much for taking some time out of your day and investing it and watching my video. We all have so many things that are happening in our lives and we're pulled in so many different directions. So the fact that you spent this time with me is incredibly humbling and I appreciate it. So thanks again and have an amazing day.